This video is about scales and I will show you how to play comfortably, gracefully and with ease at any speed. I would like to say right away that this is not a 10 minute type of tutorial where I will give you all the answers to your questions really briefly and then you're going to happily play the scales for the rest of your life. I will actually give you as much guidance and as much as many tips as I can about fundamentals of understanding what it takes to play a scale properly, what kind of movements you need to master before you start playing the scale. Before you begin working on scales in its final form, I say you need to complete the prerequisites. If you are a beginner or someone who doesn't have so much experience with scales and finds themselves um, unsure why they are not feeling comfortable, what's wrong and how to change it, these preparatory exercises are going to be a wonderful help for you. They are designed to help you achieve three key points which you need in order to be able to play the scales later on properly. Just to mention, I'm not going to focus so much on the fingertip shape because I assume, I hope that you know that the proper fingertip shape is going to be round and very focused. Because if you have the sloppy fingertip like this, you're not going to get a much control of the sound or of the key. The first key point being your independence or autonomy of each finger individually and your ability to control them. And of course, finger strength. Point number two is which what I call true legato. Achieving true legato is not easy and it requires first and foremost your ability to transfer weight from your arm, from your upper body to your finger and from the finger to the key. And the finger to be able to hold on to it while your arm is actually relaxed and heavy and your wrist is flexible and agile. And from that comes, second thing about legato is transferring that to the next note, properly, fully, without any weight suspended here. I give all my weight to this finger, transfer to the next. And take a look, I'm not holding over. I'm holding over the previous note like this. heard that right I was holding over the so two notes sounded at the same time that is never allowed with a true legato you release the previous note as soon as this one sounded and another point about true legato that is also flexible and directed towards somewhere is your ability to play in one movement or one gesture of the hand while you go Three notes or two notes, then one gesture. One time down, up. Down, up. That one gesture. No matter how many, uh, how long is your string of notes, could be five notes, I still go down once and slightly up. That will prevent you from having this kind of movement when you shake your hand on every note. Ugly, uncomfortable and tiring for your hands. So in order to avoid that you need to masterfully uh, control your legato in one gesture. Point number three is your coordination. Of course you need to have good coordination of your hands to be able to play scales with two hands. And one important point being able to play different combination of different fingers in each hand at the same time separately. Right? So, Usually, if you play in the same direction, your fingers are going to not be the same. So five against one, two against four, three is usually the same. Then you have to switch right hand, switch to thumb, left hand doesn't. Now left hand has to switch over the thumb, and so on. So in order to be comfortable with this, of course you need to practice your coordination. So this part number one will be dedicated to covering all these points in detail in preparing you for phase number two. In this first part, I will also show you the exercises to prepare you for the change of position, going over or under the thumb. This will be one of the main points you will have to worry about when you play the scale, is when you go over or under the thumb to make your line even, you will really need to truly master this 
type of change and I will show you exercises that will help you prepare for that. I will be holding my camera at different places with different angles so you can see better. Each particular exercise requires me to move my camera a little bit to give you a better view. Sometimes you will have a double view. So all of those comments regarding the way this video is designed and the ways to improve it will be appreciated. Thank you. To achieve finger independence, there are plenty of exercises. I will show a few that I like. I find them very effective. The first exercise I'd recommend is starting with holding down one finger, the, the thumb, let's say, and pressing two, then three, then four, and so on. Strength up and down, fingertip precision. And the same thing with the left hand. You can hold pinky, four. Ah, oh, that's not easy actually, because four is the most difficult. So help yourself a little bit with the hand, like this. Three, begin. This exercise is from Dohnani's book of exercises, number two. Promotes and um, also promotes the independence of fingers. You're gonna hold thumb and play. see better close up now I'm gonna hold four not easy hold three now you're holding two and look my hand is not moving it's the fingers, right? Held, hand may be helping a little bit with that motion. Again, non legato first. When you are comfortable transferring weight smoothly with legato, then you can practice, of course, legato. And same thing with the right hand. So you will go thumb first. First non legato, sorry. If you also want to practice your fingertip strength, you can do that even staccato. This one, hold, finger staccato. Very useful exercise. Now I'm gonna hold two, three, and so on. When you're comfortable then, you can proceed to legato. It's not easy. Five, four, sorry. You can here you can help yourself a little bit with the wrist if you like sideways so any combination of fingers is possible you can of course do it with two hands which is even better it also practices your coordination so if, let's say you hold the three you will also need to master that weight transfer first bet smoothly between the notes before you can proceed to legato. Legato is harder that's why we start with non legato. One of them would be I'm gonna show two hands at the same time just to save time but you could do it one hand at a time of course to begin with because it's important that you get full control of each individual finger on each hand. So you could do is you can even start here. You're gonna have to individually move fingers up and down. So for example, one, uh, one, move one, five, four, four is going to be the most difficult, by the way, to move individually. Three, two, one. Just do it here, right? And then also helps with coordination. Try to tell yourself, okay, move two on the left hand and five on the right hand. So at the same time, up, down, up, down while the other fingers are holding tight 
to this board or wherever you can do it on a table anywhere right so this is just and then you transfer all this to the keys this one so I'm gonna hold on and move one finger at a time looks easy but for some of you might not be easy and I will exaggerate my movement I could move it of course like this but to achieve strength also this is better same thing here holding down helps it prevents you from helping your finger with your hand because in the first exercises you remember um, I showed this where you can help with it right in this one you can't because your hand is holding on to all the fingers here another set of exercises that is very very famous is the hand on so for example number one it helps you practice independence of fingers first non legato it staccato finger staccato not wrist staccato not like this but you want independence of fingers and strength this is how you practice it then when you are comfortable you can do legato and a good way to ensure the strength of your fingers and to improve it is to exaggerate that aiming motion do a combination of staccato, legato, when you really feel confident that you can do it, helps you also develop coordination. So all these Hanan exercises, all the way up to 38, so these are a great way to prepare yourself. And this also help you with coordination. So I mentioned that coordination is also a requirement for playing scales. So any type of exercise like this, where you use two hands and different fingers at the same time. So the hand on number one, where you have five against one, then two against four and things like that. All those types of exercises will help you develop your coordination. So later on, you can easily play the scale and change the fingers when you need to because you're going to have to change fingers at different times and it's not easy for a beginner another exercise for developing coordination would be practicing different finger combinations in each hand first groups of two let's say right hand plays two and three and left hand will play four and three so two against four three against three usually in the scales if it's normal fingering the three fingers usually play at the same time in both hands and two is usually paired with four so you could this is a good combination to practice four against two three against three you can get more creative practice one two three against five four three if legato is difficult then do non legato first that's fine different combinations i don't know five and four against three and four and then these so any kind of combinations to make sure your coordination is in order before you proceed to play an actual scales how to develop the strength of your fingers 
one thing to remember is that they will inevitably get stronger with the regular exercise better every day and in order to increase the speed of your progress what you can do is when you're already more comfortable with the coordination and the independence of your fingers um, there are two main things that I use to increase the finger strength to train them more one is the gesture of excessive raising of a finger each time before you put it down on a key something like this that gesture finger not with the whole hand but finger right help a tiny bit with the hand but don't do this this is something different and the second way is to practice staccato the finger staccato again not the wrist not the whole hand staccato but finger staccato meaning finger initiates that jump with the minimal motion of the hand and for that purpose I actually find exercise hand number 21 very useful if you already managed the coordination it goes like this so let's first do legato with excessive finger raising. C and C, like this. Here we go. Now skip. the stops and so on so going down will be like this their fingers that much but if you need to develop strength this is one of the ways to do it the same exercise can be used for staccato practice that what I showed you before but notice how close my, you can see it my fingertip is to the key it really jumps off of the key it's on the key and then it's gonna jump off I don't do this amplitude, right? So that's the key for finger staccato. And again, another way to practice strength would be to do accents on every other note or every four notes, just like we do in the scale. You can also practice with this exercise. finger is resting and the next finger is having accents or more work so you alternate which fingers do more work and which do less um, and the last one exercise to develop agility um, even more than strength is where you combine and alternate legato and staccato so for the same exercise help you develop the muscle flexibility where you need to play like this two notes on one gesture always down up and then separate strokes for staccato this one is not easy but it's really fun to learn how to control your uh, tiny muscle movements one of the very good exercises to help you improve coordination and strength of the weaker fingers which would be finger four and five is number 30 from the hand and exercises i'm going to start here so you can see it so it's five one starting five and one and then the next finger is four against two and then you skip
compensate for the weakness of your fingers, all you're going to develop is tired, tired hand and it will not help you improve your scales or not prepare you for the scales. So be honest with yourself and if you're doing finger work, 